guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, my name is Travis. My dad over there, his name is Rick. And today we are in the high desert of Benson, Arizona on a ranch because we've located a 1961 Chevy Apache 40, I think. Yeah, Apache 40. This was an old ranch truck that has been parked in the same spot since 1987, 1988. So let's just do a quick walk around and I'll tell you just a little bit quickly about the story of this truck before we open her up and, and dig into it. There's the hay that was on it from 1987. The gentleman, the older, the older guy pulled up, shut it off, and left it. The guy that owns this ranch now actually took the hay and shoveled it off over there. So literally, it was hauling a load of hay. They parked it, got out, and that was literally it. So this, this gentleman owned this ranch, used this truck on the ranch, and then he died in the late 80s, and the truck has not moved since then can see the wheel is pretty much i mean it's buried how tall is that sidewall six inches seven inches buried in the dirt this whole flatbed used for obviously hauling hay there's some of it right there he cleaned the hay off and i think he uh, got some of the rat turds out from inside but he said he has not touched the truck uh, otherwise part of it is if we can get it running which that's what i like is that it gets to stay here on the ranch and gets used again Correct. It's not just discarded, it gets, it's going to be re, it, it'll get used again on the ranch. I found this on Facebook. The guy actually was trying to sell it, um, but he said if the truck runs, that he's going to keep using it here on the property and he's not going to sell it if it runs. Got these old bias ply tires. I can't believe any of this wood bed is still here, I mean, at all. The only thing that saved it was the fact that the hay was on it. Let me try and get over here a little bit these big old wood beams that's beefy we got our doors I'm trying to look for some you know rust we got a little bit of rust there a little bit of here but that's all right that's no big deal all right let's take a look inside the interior here we got our gas cap let's see if we can get <clears throat> Ooh. i definitely smell some gas in there it's definitely turned into varnish but Ooh, ooh. I don't know, it sounds empty to me. Pretty empty at least. The gas tank looks all right. It doesn't look rotted through, but see all the pack rats that were in here? This thing is just stuffed full. I mean, the interior though is, is fairly complete. I mean, nothing's been robbed. You can obviously tell where he was sitting. All that foam is gone. Seats there, door handles are there, glass is there. Love box, we got our, what do we got over here? We got our, look at that, fan control, we got our, let's see if this will, <clears throat> not wanting to move on me. Got our e-brake handle over there. This was probably a four-speed. And uh, and uh, he said that there was no keys. Oh, well, I guess we won't need a key if the rats didn't. Well, it'll still go into the run position there without a key. But yeah, he said there was no key. There's a delete plate for something. This is probably your air vent. You can pull your air vent to get some ventilation. Sure choke <clears throat> obviously that's gonna be locked up oh. uh. oops light switch still works pull out slide here nice here's your gas pedal uh, set that right there got your Brake pedal here. Oh gosh. Brake pedal's locked up. Clutch pedal ain't doing much of nothing either. And here's another cable for your uh, for your ventilation door. The data tag is still in here. Chevy for Economical Transportation, Chevrolet Division, General Motors Corporation. 
14,000 pound GVW. So yeah, she was made for hauling. I don't know what 14,000 GVW would be. Is that a one ton, one and a half ton, two ton? It's probably a ton. <laughs> ton and a half. 30 would be a one ton. 30 would be a one ton? Yeah. Check it out, we got cab lights, that's cool. Look at the floor pans though. They're actually intact. That's one of the benefits of being out in the desert. The rust isn't as bad, so those actually look pretty solid, honestly. Huh. Windows trying to do something. Mm-mm. Yeah, that's definitely a good 40 year sit. No internet? Nope. Not a drop. You can definitely tell it was a farm truck because they always got dents in weird places that are unexplainable. Got a pretty big cave in in the hood here. Mm. This is the definition of road hard and put up wet. Yeah. That's the definition. If you looked it up, that's what it would be. Go ahead here and open up the hood and see what we're working with. When I went to open the hood, it was really, really tough to open, and I didn't want to bend the hood or bend the hinges, so uh, I went ahead and put some Marvel Mystery Oil on, like, all 542 pivot points on the hood, because honestly, she's had a rough life, so we want to be as nice to her as possible. Look at that Marvel Mystery Oil working its magic. Goes up and down like butter now. So let's take a look and see what's left here. I'm just amazed at how complete it is. I mean, nothing has been robbed, nothing has been touched, nothing has been moved around at all i mean except this hood hinge but that's like one percent here check out that old atlas battery atlas battery i, mean, I don't remember ever being able to buy i don't remember buying an atlas battery atlas ain't around no more is they I, I don't know I, 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 even back when i was working in the garages i don't remember atlas batteries hmm well there's an atlas battery we got our crankcase breather we got our distributor distributor cap all the plug wires all the spark plugs are in it uh, we got some cake caked on grease and oil right here the only thing that worried me uh, was this right here this has been sitting open for i mean god knows how long i mean probably i'm just going to assume since it's been sitting since the 80s I, i'm just gonna i'm not going to assume someone took that off yesterday i'm gonna assume that's been sitting open for a good long while we even have the heater hoses with the original style hose clamps those old uh, pinch ones that's factory style hose clamps I mean, this has not been touched at all. I mean, this is the definition of unmolested, honestly, besides besides sitting. Got our fuel pump on there. Look, love those old oil bath air cleaners. It's still on there. The belt is off, but I'm not sure why. We'll get on that crank there and, and see if it's locked up. There's no, on these, there's no good way to grab them. They don't have a bolt on the harmonic don't balancer? I think so. Our only saving grace in this situation is to try and put the belt back on and tighten it up, turn the fan, and see if it turns the engine. Even though that belt has definitely seen some better days, but that's all right. It'll work for our purposes. We almost have the belt tightened, and now it's time for the moment of truth. Well, that's good. That's a good thing. With dust pretty much falling out of every single crevice as it rotates, I don't think it's locked up. I worked it back and forth. I worked it in a circle. Uh, it's not stopping or binding on anything really major. So uh, I think we're pretty much good to go, but I just give it a good turnaround. I don't just, you know, one inch and we're good. You know, I work it a little bit. We're going to get this old Atlas battery out of here, but uh, going to keep it around because it's just kind of cool to have. So at this point, I want to say something. Uh, what most people do at this time is they immediately, before they start it, put new spark plugs, new plug wires, new cap and rotor and points and condenser and all of that stuff. Um, I am very gingerly trying to remove these uh, spark plugs off the spark plugs because we're going to try and reuse all this. The whole idea of a will it run is will it run as it sits where we find it 
uh, how what percentage of this is reusable basically and it's easy to get trigger happy and start throwing parts and money at stuff but my opinion is wait a minute whoa 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 i mean hold up did you check and see if it worked in the first place do we know that that's bad all right well if we don't know it's bad try it if it's good all right let's run with it this old stuff uh, from the age of industry can take a pretty hard beating and be abused pretty bad and it will show signs of life in ways you won't expect so we got the spark plugs out and we'll show you what they look like so you can see one through six uh, they all look about the same about the same color they don't look super super fouled out none of them looks uh, like they were in distress that one has a little dirt on it but uh, that's okay she's fine she's fine while we got the spark plugs out dad's operating the throttle linkage on the carburetor and uh, by the looks of it it's going up and down but whether it's doing anything inside there we have no idea but i'm putting marvel mystery oil down every single cylinder just trying to give it the best chances of success it also helps increase the compression a little bit having uh, oil on top of the piston and if you dig on these kind of videos make sure you subscribe to the channel it triggers that youtube algorithm and says hey these are some good old boys let's push their videos to more people using the old model 1842 pump oiler to get to the rest of these cylinders i like my pump oiler people make fun of me for it i don't know why Next order of business is to check the oil, and surprise, surprise, there was nothing on the stick whatsoever. Where it went, I don't know. But we have to at least read on the dipstick uh, so we don't burn it up, if indeed it starts. But something happened while I was putting the oil in that I don't think I've ever seen before. Uh, usually you don't have this problem. So, it's that oil's coming out of that valve cover real bad. I, mean, I probably lost almost everything I just put in it right there on the uh, bell housing. The only thing you could do, well, look, oh my gosh. And it would be easier just to pour the oil all over the top of the motor and probably there's a bunch of dirt. So I'm sure dad's probably right about that, that this oil cap was sitting open, probably got a bunch of dirt in there and filled up the drain plugs that make the oil lead back to the crankcase. I mean, that hole is definitely big enough for a mouse to get through. So who knows what is underneath the valve cover, but we got to do a little bit of investigating action uh, and get to the bottom of what's going on in that valve cover. It shrunk so much, it, it's supposed to curve and go here. That's where the valve cover sits, but it's going there. It, this disformed dysmorphia, it, we got, what is this, leaves in here? We got those mesquite tree pecans, or whatever they are. Mesquite tree beans. Yeah. See that one? Yeah, it's a good thing we pulled this off. We need to spray this down. Did you bring any, uh, any uh, hmm. WD or is it just marble? No, just marble. Okay, yeah, let's just get this crap off of here. We'll have to get this gasket off. I mean, it's trashed anyway. Yeah, Look at that. Just comes apart right in your hand. So we're doing the best we can at picking uh, the mesquite tree beans and whatever else is on top of the valve cover out uh, using our old pump oiler and just putting some oil on top of all the valve train here. And now would be a good time to rotate the engine by hand while we're looking at the valves to see if any of the valves are sticking open because that would definitely prevent it from running. What the problem is, is if you look, you can see all this crud, these beans and these leaves and whatever, they're crowding the holes where the oil's supposed to drain back and that's why it's it's pooling on top of the motor and it's just chilling there. So we found this next to the truck and we're gonna try and clear those holes out. The oil drains through the uh, push rod holes. I'm just sticking that rod down in there. 
I mean, I know this needs more than what we're doing right now, but we're just doing what we can because uh, we only have a day to be here. But uh, that's what it is. Look at that. Ooh. Get her down into the crankcase real far. So before we go any further, we're gonna go ahead and put a battery in it and just double check and see if the starter's even gonna work. Cause we could do all this work and if the starter won't work, we don't have a way to pull this truck um, to even start it with the clutch and the clutch doesn't work anyway. So this starter needs to work or we're, we're dead in the water. Watch your eyes. <laughs> Oh, you better hope that starter turns. That key s switch actually worked without a key being in it. Yeah. So. All right. Best we can do is you know, give it a whirl. But I got a way to jump it if it don't. Radio's on. No way. <laughs> <laughs> Generator light's on. Are you serious? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh no watch way. out now, watch out. Wow. Try it again, let me watch these valves. This one's not doing nothing. Yeah, they're all working, but this one. But which one? I'm making a mess, but uh, I got my finger on it here. What's it doing, going it's down? It's not doing nothing. It's just sticking in that position. Oh, you need to you need to hammer it down every time it spins over. You need to tap it. Okay. Keep cranking. There you go. Now it's doing its thing. Crank it a little more, let me watch. All right, they're all working. It would have never run. Yeah. I mean, it, it the oil wasn't going back down. Even if it did pump it to the top, it wasn't going to come back down. Mm -hmm. and, and plus, it would have been uh, popping back through the carburetor and everything because the valve would have been stuck open. It wouldn't have even ran. So yeah. now we got much higher odds of it running. I didn't bring, I didn't bring a compression gauge, so I can't test the compression. But you can run your finger on the cylinder hole, and you can see. In a roundabout way, if it's building anything, you, you don't know. Check exactly. it real quick. Yeah. Yep. Keep going. Now I ain't doing nothing. Is the valve opening and shutting? Try it. Ah, it's getting better. Okay, go ahead. Yep. There we go. And now it's building. Okay, go ahead. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm getting spark. Oh. Whoa. Shocked me. Uh, this one's uh, grounding. Wow. Yeah. Try it again. Well, that's the whole idea there, buddy. You ready? Yeah. That one's real good. Okay. Oh, wow. Go ahead. Go ahead. Bam. All right. I think these two are a hair bit low, but. Uh, Which ones? Uh, two and are three they, are a little low. Do they need some help closing or? No, no, no. The valves are closing. Okay. I had to hold my finger over it for a couple of rotations before it actually popped. Oh, yeah. Because which two was it? These two. Which, let me see. These two were kind of. The second and third one? Yeah. Well, here, let's. Spraying babies down some more. She just needs to have. See, these trucks were designed to go forth and pollute. Mm -hmm. And they need oil. It's all good. It's all good. So we know we got we know we got that going for us. I'm kind of back to square one here of um, making sure there's oil in it. I 
did all this so that we could, you know, put some oil in there. Can you hold that or something so I can pour this in? Hold on. Let's see if it'll drain back down. Yeah, so we're not just wasting it. All right, that's good, that's good. Because I don't want it to run over the top. It's draining. Yeah, put a little bit back here. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Right all over the rocker arms. All right. Look at that. Oh, I like it. Yeah. This is what she needs. This is what she's thirsty for. Earl. I think that's plenty. We're still not reading Jack. Really? No. Not huh. yet. I hope there's not a hole in the oil pan. <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Oh goody, we're reading. I know we're low, but we're reading about there. This is like the full mark, but there's still some here in the rocker galley that's gonna drain down. It's cold-ish, so it's it's kind of moving like molasses, but more will trickle down in there. We're reading on the dipstick, so I mean, that's good enough to keep moving. Because we're gonna dump the oil out of it once it gets hot, maybe, or if we can. Maybe yeah. put, when it gets good and hot, we'll just drain it. Yeah. Got all the valves working. Yep. And it had compression, right? Yeah. points are way off. See how these contacts right here aren't lining up at all? Something happened to these points. Huh? To the top of it yet? No. Here and show you. This was like bent down, for, so I bent it back up with the screwdriver and we gapped them with a little piece of cardboard and we got the key on. Let me see if you guys can see. Oh, key's off. Turn the key on. All right. See it now? No. What happened? See that pop? They're working now. It should run now. Wait, 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 wait. No wires on. Okay. Ready? I think I am. Pour some gas down it. All right. Still sparking. Ah, gosh. Sparking, ain't it? A little bit more gas, buddy. All right, all right. You ready? Yep. Come on, accelerate. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yeah, open up that throttle. All the way. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, keep pouring gas to it. All right. Open that throttle all the way. It's open.
I don't know if we've uh, fouled out our plugs or not. I hope not. I don't know what that oil. We put a lot of Marvellius in there. Then I had a, I put Marvellius in that carburetor too. All right, throttles open. <laughs> Pump the piss out of it. Oh, you got it. You got it. Hmm. She's close. Try it again. What were you doing there? I was choking it, oh. kind of choking and unchoking it. Pour some more gas down. It likes gas. Come on. Keep doing what you're doing. All right, stop. Man, she's close. Pour some gas down her. Might be choking it too much. Let off a little bit. Oh. Ready? <laughs> about to go dead. We had to get the old first gen pulled around, get the jumpers hooked up so we can charge this battery up because we're really, really close to getting this thing going right now. I'll give her a little shot of brake clean just because they win. She needs some help. Alright. Choke it again. Okay. There we go. Choke it. Well, I turned it off. It sounded like it was running away from itself. You got to pull the accelerator back down. So what I'm doing now is, is we just unhooked the line from the uh, fuel pump to the carb, and I'm just hooking up our electric fuel pump so that we can just fill the bowl and keep feeding it if it does run instead of trying to continually do it by pouring it with the cap. Because uh, if it does run, I want to keep it running and see if it'll idle. tank. There you go. Might need something to set it on, huh? It'll reach. Oh, will it? <clears throat> Positive. Negative. Just for the hell of it, just I heard it change its tune. Oh, why am I getting shot? You ready? You 
something happens and it catches on fire, just start picking up dirt and throwing it on it, you I know? I also have five gallons of water in there. All right. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, stop, 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 stop. We got oil pressure, that's for sure. This is the hose that connected to the oil filler, yeah, the oil filter canister, and it was cracked, and I just broke it off. And uh, we thought about vice gripping it shut, but there's no way. If you see these cracks in here, you couldn't you couldn't shut it. It'll just it'll just break. See that? There's no way. I hear it cracking. So we took it off, and because I want to hear it idle, we drove into town to get a uh, eighth inch plug. So. I'll screw this plug in it, tighten it up, and it should be able to idle on its own without spewing oil everywhere. But uh, at least we know that it does have oil pressure and good oil pressure too. It was squirting out quite some velocity. Plugs in it, fuel's going. Uh, give it another shot. Oh wow! That is oh, one awesome. sweet running Very truck. Good. Very good. Cool. Yeah, it's time. Hold on. It's time to go ahead and give it a whirl. That is a sweet motor. At 12 2, I wanted to see if it was charging. 12 2. Dial it up some. Charges. Uh, I mean, it was a bad chance, but it's not fun. Look at that. The generator light works after all these years. That is really cool. Oh. Here he is. Oh. I can't tell what that <laughs> is. Brian's. Brian is out there. You can't see him. I, I didn't see him pull up right now. Look at that. Started right up without anyone touching it. Very sweet running truck. What do you think about that? Isn't that cool? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a very nice running truck. I wasn't expecting to see it running so, so smoothly. <laughs> yeah, it does. It runs very good. That squeaking noise, I think, is that fuel pump. Okay. We got the fuel pump open because we knew it was no good. Well, they go bad after. Uh, yeah, they're, they're no good. Like two years. It's the fuel pump. We didn't pump. want it to suck anything from the tank if there was anything in the tank. What's that? We didn't want it to suck anything from the tank. If oh, there was, if there was anything in the tank, we I'm, didn't. I'm sure there's a. If you need a clutch, the clutch, slave cylinder, and the master cylinder, and. Needs a lot of stuff, but okay. but it is a sweet running truck. It's it's definitely not a pot. It, it sounds all right. Well, after sitting for about 35 years, it runs and drives, and we really didn't have to add any new parts except for that one little plug. Now, I really wanted to drive it today. I thought, man, if we could get it running, then we could drive it because it's a manual. But that clutch is so froze up, it's so locked up, it would need a new uh, master cylinder because the master cylinder is for the brake and the clutch and a slave cylinder. It's hydraulically operated, it's not mechanical like I was kind of hoping. Uh, I tried everything in my power to drive this truck, but it's going to need more work than what we can do today to even get it moving under its own power because that hydraulic clutch is uh, it's not working. So I was hoping that you guys could see it actually move under its own power, but, but I don't know. Maybe there's a possible opportunity for an update video in the future. I don't know. Also, before I clock out, uh, if you're somewhere in Arizona, we're in Benson. We're based in Tucson, Dad and I. 
are based in Tucson. If you have an old truck that's abandoned like this that you want to get running again, uh, anything pre-1980 that's abandoned, sitting, complete, uh, hit us up. My email is in the description of this video. And if you have any, I'm very, very interested in first gen Cummins. If you have any abandoned first gen Cummins, uh, like my truck, 89 to 93 12 valve Cummins that hasn't ran in 10, 15 years or sitting in a field or sitting somewhere uh, that you either want to sell or get running again, very, very interested in 89 to 93 first gen Cummins or pre-1980 trucks uh, or cars. Line's always open for those opportunities. Shoot me an email with what you got, pictures and stuff. Very interested this year in trying a fly and drive, trying, trying our hand at a fly and drive. Um, if you have some opportunity like that or a car that's been sitting for many, many years, um, you know, email dad and I. But thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing. That really, really, really helps out the channel. The shorts I've been putting out have been helping the subscriber growth quite a bit. I don't know, I hope that translates into long form content viewers um, because it's like literally the same content. But at any rate, appreciate the subscribes, likes, comments, feedback, and we'll see you guys in the next one.